departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And the eyes were opened, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. Go back to verse 29, our launching pad. This verse is, strikes me, come alive. And we're talking about make it happen. Jesus did not finish the miracle for them. They had to participate in it. Two things for God to move on our behalf. God requires our involvement and participation. Let's say it loud and strong. God requires our involvement and participation. So we want to bring some clarification and understanding with that word today. And if you notice, the topic is make it happen. Let's say it loud and strong. Make it, make, happen. It happen. make it happen. You have to make certain things happen in your life. God is not going to spoon feed us. We have to make certain things happen. God is going to require our involvement and participation. Yeah. Now look at this incident here. Two blind men uh, needing a miracle. Verse 27, and when Jesus, uh, verse 29, and then he touched their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. He touched their eyes, and he said to them, it's on you now. It's on you. It's, it's, it's about you. It's all about you. He, he didn't pry their eyes open. He, he didn't do what crazy preachers do, uh, spin them around, you know, try to knock them down and create a scene. He simply, George, touched their eyes and said to them, be it according to your faith. So it's up to you. Amen. I did my part. I touched your eyes. Do, can you believe? Can you believe that I can open your eyes? Yes. So basically, their faith was the currency to their miracle. Amen. Anybody hear this? Yes, he said, according to your faith, be it unto you. Your faith can open doors. Your faith can make things happen. Yes. Your faith, he said, according to your faith, and here we are saying, I'm, I'm waiting on God. And God is saying, it's according to your faith. Amen. Well, are you going to get up, get to stepping, and do something to make it happen? Remember I spoke about David last week? told about this DVD that I, I did back in 2009, November 29th. The topic is having a positive mindset, a tribute to David McCarthy, a young man I met in a parking lot in Miami, 18 years of age, looking lost, confused, depressed, sad, and started talking to him. He had a world of issues, nothing going right. And invited David to the church, he came to the church. Eventually, he brought his girlfriend, his, his mom, his sister, and other family and friends. And, and David always said these words to me. He said, Pastor, I can cut here. Pastor, I can cut here. He would say it sterling over and over. He was not cutting here yet. He was struggling. He was broke. He was busted. He was disgusted. 
But he kept saying, I can cut here. I can cut here. I can cut here. And he would say, Pastor, one day I'm going to have my own barber shop. He would say it over because what? It's according to your faith. You have to make it happen. We have to stop being religious. We have yeah. to stop being traditional. Amen. We have to stop saying things like, I'm just waiting on God. Amen. When, are you getting, when are you going to get married? I'm waiting on God. All of these <laughs> handsome, good-looking, beautiful people around you, you're waiting on God to bring somebody and drop them in your lap? David eventually got married, has two barber shops now in Miami. One of them is eight years old, one is two years old. Last week I asked David, How many people do you have working for you? He said, In the first barber shop, he has, he has four barbers and six stylists. How many barbers? Four. And how many stylists? So how many people are that? Six. Yeah, ten. Okay, ten. This one makes sure. <laughs> ten. So I said to I asked David, how much do because the last time I spoke to him, they were paying him hundred and fifty dollars per chair. How much? He said, they pay me two hundred dollars a week. For a chair. Wow. So you have at one barber shop, 10 people, four barbers, six stylists, paying him $200 a week. That is two times 10, if my math serves me right, and if I am smart as Dario, that's $2,000 a week. Amen. Plus he has his own, his own clientele. So he's, he's collecting from the six stylists, four barbers, plus he has his own clientele. Yeah. So he's racking up every week. Amen. This is a guy who was struggling. Yeah. His girlfriend would have to sneak him in the house at night to take a shower when she lived with her grandmother. This is a guy who would have so many tickets from Metro Day police cops. Oh my goodness. No insurance, no registration, oh, raggedy car, violating the laws of Miami. Come on now. This is the guy who was broke. When he calls me, back then they had pay phones. When he calls me, when he calls me, uh, Sterling, and, and I hang up, he would, I pick up, he would hang up real fast. So the quarter can return because he was so broke he needs his quarter back. Yeah. Wow. And when he hangs up, I knew that was David. Yeah. And then I would call him back at the payphone. He was so broke he couldn't join, afford 25 cents. You know you're really down. But David kept saying to me, I can cut him. I'm going to have my own barbershop one day. Today, he made it happen. Amen. He has two barbershops. He has his own house. And he lives in Miami, but if he doesn't want to go all the way to Miami Beach or Collins Avenue to enjoy the beach, and he wants to just enjoy being in water, he has his own swimming pool in the back of his yard. He has a Lexus, his wife has a Lexus, and he has a BMW. <laughs> Come on. When I go to Miami now, I don't rent hotels. I stay at his house. Amen. I drop him to work, and I drive his BMW. Amen. Like I said last week, those of you who know me, I don't drive with window down, but when I'm in his BMW, I put the windows <laughs> down. <laughs> I want people to see me, see a black man on wheels. <laughs> That's what BMW means, black man on wheels. So I used to live in Miami, so maybe I still have some friends in Miami, and they'll see me in a BMW, and they're like, oh, D, you step it up? Yes, sir. Don't ask me who car it is, don't none of your business. Fact is, I'm driving something 
lavish and nice. Yes, sir. But this was all because he believed he can make it happen. Amen. So I want to show you this morning, and I want to provoke you in part two, that when you leave here, you should go out of this building believing that you can walk on a swimming pool and don't sink. I should build your faith up so high this morning that you can go to a swimming pool and test your faith and start walking in water. So let's go to work. Can we go to work? Go to Habakkuk in the Old Testament. Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2. And let's start walking slowly. Because I want to build your faith that when you leave here today, you can leave here saying all things are possible. Amen. You should leave here saying whatever my situation is, I am going to make it happen and turn things around. Hallelujah. I said to you last week, God is not going to come down heaven, step to earth, yes. and, and dro drop things in your lap. Amen. He's not going to do that. That's not the kind of God we serve. Yeah, he, re he requires our involvement and participation. Oh my Are you hearing me, somebody? He requires our involvement and participation. Now, there are four scriptures in the Bible, in your Bible, in our Bible, that I want you to learn, I want you to know, I want you to be familiar with, I want you to, to, to memorize, I want you to get a handle on these four scriptures, these four scriptures will revolutionize your life and change your life. Amen. If you grab a hold of these four scriptures I'm going to release to you this morning, that sterling, your life will never be the same. What did I just say? Your life will never be the same. These four scriptures can transform your life for the better. They have worked in my life. So, Habakkuk chapter 2. And uh, are you in Habakkuk chapter 2? And let's go to, let's go to verse 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. But the just shall live by his faith. Anybody ever heard this scripture before? Now give me a moment to break it down and explain this to you. Because I want you not only to, to be familiar with this scripture, George. But I want you to be able to, to quote it, memorize it, know where to find it. I know what it really means for you as an individual. I just don't want to dance over a scripture. I want to understand God's word in my life. Amen. So he said here, but the just, well, underline that word, just. I want to know who are the just or who is the just. Because he's giving me a key here. He's telling me that the just shall live by his faith. Not somebody else's faith. And Anybody hear me? The just, so George, I need a clear understanding who is the just. Then I need to know, because he told me that the just, meaning I have to figure out, am I one of the just? What is a just person? Who is a just person? Then I have to figure out, if I am that just person, George, then he's telling me the rest of the story is, the just shall live. I have to understand, what is he saying about the just shall live? So I need to understand what that Hebrew word means, live, by his faith. So there are two words in this verse I want to, I want to bring to light this morning. To, to, to inspire you and to motivate you. The first word is just, and the second word is live. So he said, the just shall do what? Live. Shall live by his faith. So just here means, of course, righteous man or righteous woman. 
Somebody who's living right. You're, you're, you know, you know, you ever hear somebody tell you, you're a good man. You're good people. You're a good lady. Okay, we have that understanding. The second meaning, the Hebrew word to the just, is lawful. Everybody say lawful. Lawful. Meaning, you can't drive in Georgia. You can drive, but to be lawful and to be legal on the streets, on the roadway, you need what? A driver's a driver's license. I have my driver's license. So you need what? This driver's license makes me lawful to drive on the roadway. Yes or no? Yes. Makes me lawful. The just shall live. The just means a lawful person. A legal person. That means God is saying you are not an illegal alien Amen. in his kingdom. Amen. You, are, you, are, you are lawful. You are legal. I have, so I brought you mine to show proof that I am because I am just, I am lawful. The just, the legal, the lawful shall live by faith. I have also my passport. I have two passports. I have how many passports? I have two passports. And some of you only have one. So nah, 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 nah. I have two. I'm trying to get another one. Go marry a girl from France or England and get another one. This one is from Christopher and Nevis, where I was born. So I have two citizenships. One where I was born. So if Donald Trump puts me out, I can go home. <laughs> if my country decides they don't want me back, I can stay here because I have dual citizenship. All right, so this is my American passport. And this American passport, just in case you don't know, this American passport is a bad boy, has some power. Open doors that no other passport can open. What, I used to travel a lot back in those days, and one day I was traveling, and I had to go through Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico customs and immigration uh, is very strict. And I was traveling, had to go through Puerto Rico, and there were some Caucasian white people in front of me going through immigration. The immigration officer did not stop them, nor question them. They went on with ease, say with ease. Some Spanish, Hispanic people were before me. He didn't stop them. They went on with ease. Here's this black man coming along, O.D. Joseph. The immigration asked me. He stopped me and said, where were you born? I said to him, I am a U.S. citizen. He said, I understand, but where were you born? I'm a U.S. citizen. Doesn't matter where I was born. The fact is, I hold... This bad boy. I'm, I'm illegal. I'm not an illegal alien. So he stopped me because of the color of my skin, my pigmentation. So he thought maybe I'm some illegal alien trying to go somewhere. So when he asked me over and over where I was born, I never told him where I was born. I said, I have a U.S. passport and that is what matters most. I'm lawful. I never told him where I was born. Why? He couldn't do anything to me. He couldn't deport me. He couldn't put me out. Why? I have a bad boy right in my hand. I am what? I am just. I am lawful. So, I brought that to draw my point. So, let's go back to Habakkuk. He says, the just, and we understand just means you are legal, you are lawful. Once we are connected to God, God is saying that you are lawful to certain things and the blessings of God. Amen. You have legal rights to it. Why? You are just. You are lawful. You are legal. Anybody hear me? 
He said the just, changed the word just to legal, lawful. So God is saying you are, you are lawful. Okay, Habakkuk says what now? The just shall live by faith. So let's look at the word uh, live, underline live. The word live, he says in the Hebrew, the just, the lawful, the legal. So if you are legal in God's kingdom, if you are lawful, you have all rights to the blessings of God, meaning you are lawful. The blessings of God are yea and amen. You are lawful. Amen. And he said, amen. that lawful individual that holds heaven's passport, <laughs> that holds heaven's driver's license, yeah. God is saying, you are lawful and you shall live by your faith. Yeah. Didn't say Somebody else is saying, he said, the just shall live by his faith. So I need to understand the just. I already know who the just is now because that's me. I'm lawful. I'm legal. Then he said, you shall live. Okay. What does the word live in the Hebrew mean? It means you shall live means to recover. Some things you lost, he said, you shall recover. You shall repair. The just shall repair. You shall repair. Another word is restore. Restore. You shall restore. God says, I will restore unto you the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm have eaten up. Restore. Another word for live is behold. Behold. And lastly, surely. So God is saying, the lawful person shall recover certain things. I will repair relationships. I will repair marriages. I will repair relationships and finances. He says, and I will also restore certain things that you have lost. Yes. Amen. So he says, the just shall recover whatever you have lost. You shall recover them. Who shall recover them? The just shall live by his faith. Now let's go to 2 Corinthians 5, 7. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. These are four scriptures I want you to memorize. Know where they are. Know be familiar with them is the first one I just gave you in Habakkuk. Now let's look at the second one, 2 Corinthians 5, 7. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. The just shall live by faith. Now hear what God is saying. You can make things happen based on your faith. Am I going good so far? So, four scriptures I want you to know and be familiar with. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. And here's the second one. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. 2 Corinthians 5. Read loud and strong with me. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Two words I want you to understand in that verse. One, walk. What does it mean we walk by faith? What does it mean we walk by faith? And the second word I want you to be familiar with is sight. He said we walk by faith. That means my faith is so important. My faith plays a critical role in who I become tomorrow. My faith will help me to make things happen as David's faith made him a barber a couple of years ago. And now he's not broke anymore. Amen. David was so broke that another broke man would not sit next to him. That's how broke he was. 
hanging of people, birds of a feather. But another broke man would not want to hang around David, how broke he was. But David made things happen today. He's no longer broke. He has his own home. He has his own home. He has two nice vehicles. He has his swimming pool. He has two beautiful sons. His wife is doing well. They drive nice vehicles. He has two barbershops. Why? He made things happen. So we walk by faith. What does the word walk mean? We walk by faith. Walk means, in the Greek, proof of ability. We, we have a proof of ability. Do you have the ability to pursue God and pursue the blessings of God and the things of God? He said we walk, meaning this is proof of your ability. That means your involvement, your participation is needed in the blessings of God. God is not coming down from heaven to do anything for anybody on earth. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God is not coming down from heaven, coming down from heaven to do anything for anybody. If he did, George, nobody on planet will be broke. Would be broke. Nobody on earth would be struggling. The Africans would not be starving. Haitians would not be starving living in shacks. That means God requires our participation and our involvement to make things happen in our lives. God already did his part by sending his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross. Now we have to do our part. We have to make things happen. So he said, we walk by faith, proof of ability, not by sight, meaning, the word sight means appearance. Sight means appearance. It means view. How do you view things? How do you look at things? What is your perspective on certain things? We walk by faith, a proof of ability, not by how we see things now. I know how bad things are, but I'm going to look at it from a different perspective with a different eye. Amen. I'm not going to look at it from, from how I feel. Amen. I'm not going to look at my situation the way it is. I'm going to have faith eyes. Yes. Tell somebody, I have faith eyes. I am see he said we walk by proof of ability by faith and not by he said God is saying what you see in front of your very eyes plain clear as day don't look at it that way you have to put on faith eyes anybody hear me he said we walk by faith and not by Side, we walk by faith and not by sight. Let's go to the next scripture, Romans chapter 1, verse 17. Four scriptures I want you to know. Romans 1, verse 17. These four scriptures are the key to us making things happen, changing our situation, creating our own world around us. Anybody hearing this good looking preacher? Sure. Amen. Huh? He said, We walk by faith. faith, not by how I am seeing my present situation. I know it's bad, I know I'm struggling, but I'm going to put on my faith glasses. Hallelujah. We walk by faith, not by sight. Romans chapter 1. Verse 17, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. It's all about faith. As it is written, the just, the legal, the lawful person shall live by faith. Faith. Never said you're going to live by your singing, your dancing, your praying, 
You're prophesying. You're laying hands. You're speaking in tongues. You know most churches prophesy to people just to keep them? <coughs> can be a gimmick sometimes. He said, none of that. He said, your faith is the key. So, I gave you Habakkuk. I gave you 2 Corinthians 5, 7. I just gave you Romans 1, verse 17. Now, let's go to Hebrews 10. Well, go to Galatians. Galatians. Galatians 3, 11. I said four scriptures, but it's actually five. Galatians what? 3.11 But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just, the lawful, the legal person. Listen, you have to understand who you are now. You know who you are now. Yeah. You know who you are. Who are you? I am legal. I am not no illegal alien in God's kingdom. I am legal. I'm lawful. That means you have all rights to the blessings and the favor of God. Anybody hear me? He said, because if, if he keeps telling me, Michael, the just, then I have to stop and think and begin to wonder, who is the just? So I discovered the just is somebody who's legal and lawful. That means that's me. That's you. The just, the legal, the lawful shall live by his faith. That's in Romans. And Galatians 3.11, the just shall live by faith all through the Bible. You are seeing the lawful person shall live by his faith. And you are, you are L-A-W-F, you are lawful, you are legal. You have heaven's driver's license. You have heaven's passport. No demonic immigration can stop you. You are lawful. When I was going through the Puerto Rican airport, when he asked me where I was born, I never told him where I was born. I told him, I have a U.S. passport, and that is what matters. You can't deport me. You can't lock me up. You can't throw me in jail. I am lawful. <laughs> Anybody hearing me, man? Oh, yeah. huh? When you are lawful, listen, go, go, go drive. And you know your driver's license is suspended. And every blue light you see, you pull over. <laughs> every cop behind you, 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 you take the next turn because you want him to bypass you. Because you know you are not lawful. Come on, somebody. Uh, you make sure you drive. You, when, when a light is about to change from green to red and it's amber, you, you don't speed up. You slow down. Because you know I am not lawful. Now you hear me, somebody. Yeah. Amen, somebody. When you come to a, a stop sign, you don't slow down and roll through the stop sign. You come to a complete stop. And you look left, you look right, and then you, you proceed. Why? Because you know that you are not lawful. You're not lawful. So a lawful, a person who's not lawful, they have to drive carefully, cautiously, and they have to make sure they're always three minutes within the speed limit. Anybody can relate. But when you are lawful, you pass the cops on all on the side of the road. Amen, somebody. Because you are lawful. You're not restricted. There's no warrant out for your arrest. You are lawful. And God is saying, the lawful shall live by his faith. There are things you can possess. There are things you, you can walk in and, and act boldly, square your shoulders, lift your head, speak loud and clear. Why? You are lawful. When I was growing up, my mom raised four babies, and my mom struggled to raise four babies. Why? Because we were very poor. And when we don't have certain things, we would go by the neighbor to bang, to borrow. And we would always go and we'd go over and we'll say, Mommy say if you can lend. But when we go to borrow from the neighbors, There are two reasons why we go to the neighbor. To give back what we borrowed or to lend, to borrow. Yeah. Now, do you know when you're borrowing something, 
there's a different facial expression than when you're giving back. So when we go to borrow, we put on a sad face. Mommy said, if you can lend us this. When we go to give back, Mommy said, here it is. Thank you very much. We're bold, big, and bad. God is saying, you are bold, big, and bad. You're not borrowing. Why? You are legal. You're lawful. One of the scriptures. Hebrews 10, 38. Hebrews 10, 38. These five scriptures you must know because it's a thinking man's world. Amen. You have to make things happen, not God. You. Amen. Good. David made things happen out of poverty. Amen. David's first apartment, he got it because I got it in my name and he lived it because his credit was shot. Yeah. Couldn't get an apartment. But now he has his own house. Yeah. Why? He made it happen. So you are here today and you're leaving this building and you're leaving here and you're going to say, I'm going to make things happen. Amen. Stop waiting on God. God is waiting on you, baby. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Stop listening to those churches that tell you, fake it till you make it. Amen. Jeffrey, there's no more fake it till you make it. I'm going to make it happen. Amen. Come on. Am, I, am I right, Devin? You're not going to fake anything till you make it. Because if you fake it till you make it, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be a long road down the road. Yes, sir. It's be a long way down the road before you make it. But if you live by faith, it's all possible. So let's go to Hebrews 10. And where did I tell you to go? Hebrews 10, 38. Yes, Loud and strong. Hebrews 10, 38 with me. Now the lawful, yes. the legal, because now you have established, Michael, who you are. You know I'm the just, and just means I am legal, I am lawful, I have a heaven's driver's license, I have a heaven's passport, and nobody can stop me, because I'm all bad. Amen. I'm like, my dear, I'm all bad by myself. Are you hearing me? Yes, when you're not legal, you're very careful what you do, what you say, where you go. Very true. Very true. Look, now the just shall live by faith. I just want you to see all these five scriptures. The just shall live by faith. So, God is not coming down to do anything for any of us. He requires your involvement and participation. Amen. Okay, you don't believe me. Come on now. You don't believe me. So can I break it down to you some more? All right, so here is God. God is in heaven. And we kept saying, oh, I'm waiting in God. Why, why you haven't done this yet? I, I, I'm waiting and ah, I'm waiting until he comes through for me. Yeah. Antonio, God is not leaving heaven, coming to earth to do anything for any of us. He did that over 2,000 years ago when he sent his son Jesus. Amen. The next time he comes back to earth is to set up his kingdom. Yeah. So you think God, God doesn't have anything good to do that he's going to stop what he's doing just to come down to fix a teeny little bitty problem. <laughs> when he knows that you have the ability to do it, you, he, he left you some faith to do it. Amen. How did David move from being broke, busted, and disgusted, can't be trusted by his toothless grandmother to be who he is today? Because he, he, he realized uh, there is an involvement and there is participation. Amen. Well, Pastor, I disagree with you. I, I, I'm going to stay right here and wait on God. We keep on waiting. Because if God comes down to do it for us, that means God will have to come down. God will have to come down. And God will have to brush my hair for me. <laughs> 
come you don't wait till God to brush your hair and comb your hair? You only wait on God to bring your blessings, but you, 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 you take initiative to do practical daily things. Come on. When was the last time God combed your hair, brushed your hair, George? When? Never? So who combed your hair? Who brushed your hair? Why don't you wait on God to brush your hair, comb your hair? Come on, somebody. I, I don't tell you that nonsense. I, I, why did you call me in here before you step out of your house, boy? I, 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 I'll weigh in God. Uh, sure. wow. The foolish things we are taught in churches. Yes, sir. Come on now. Oh. I, I, I shaved this morning. Yes. I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't say, wait, God, you could come down and shave for me? No. God requires my involvement and participation. Yes, sir. So if we can take initiative in doing daily practical things that are necessary, why don't we begin to make other things happen with the power of our faith? Amen. Come on now. I shaved this morning, and I am God's preacher, and God didn't feel, God didn't feel sorry for me. I said, oh dear, now you're going to preach this morning, so just let me help you out and let me shave for you. God didn't do that. I took the initiative. I took the initiative. Because if we wait on God, you have to wait on God to do what? To, to, to put on your... But you know if you don't put on deodorant, you're going to smell really, hear this ghetto word, funky, I'm from Funk City. So because you don't want to smell like you're from Funk City, you make sure you take it upon yourself not to wait on God to come down to put on your... Come on now. Why? So that if God is not coming down from heaven to put on your deodorant, that means he requires your involvement in every other area of life. Stop. There is a season oh. for waiting on God when it comes to his timing and his will. Yeah. But certain things God requires our participation yeah. and our involvement because we know we are legal, we are lawful because he said the just shall live proof of ability by faith. In all my years living, and you know I'm one of God's most handsome men. I have small dimples, you have to look close to see. I have brown eyes. But God never, you're looking at my toothpaste tube, honey, I'm going to wait until it's dry. I, I don't waste things. And, and when, it, when it gets really empty, I roll it up and I squeeze yeah. out and I'm empty. <laughs> Call me mean, call me stingy. That's how the rich make it, baby. I've had this for over three months. Same cue. And I don't, I don't pull my whole brush up. I just put a little pinch. Just a little pinch. That's all I need. Why you want to put a whole bunch to waste? You have, you have more than 30 to team? <laughs> Tremaine, we have to... Learn to economize. Yeah. So in all my years living, as nice of a preacher I am, God never once brushed my teeth. Amen. And I never once was dumb nor stupid enough to come to church with unbrushed teeth and when Mavis asked me, Pastor, why your breath is kicking? Why your teeth look all trapped? I, I, maybe I was waiting on God to brush my teeth. How come I don't do that? How come I take the initiative? So that means if we don't wait on God to brush our teeth, we don't wait on God to give us a bath, that means we ought to begin to be wise 
and don't expect God to come down. I'll show you next week. The only time God comes down from heaven is for something else. I'll show you next week. You don't want to miss it. But when it comes to your miracles, changing your situation, making things happen, breaking out of your dilemma, breaking out of your struggles, God says you have to make sure your faith, your involvement, and your participation is alive. He said, the just shall, look at the word live, proof of ability. What is proof of ability? When you ever ask somebody, hey, Sterling, how are things? Here's Sterling's response, I'm living. Dario, how are things with you, man? Ah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep my head above water. That's not living. He says, the just shall live, not try to keep his or her head above water. He says, you shall live. Are you hearing me? Yeah. The thief comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. But I come that you may have a life and have it more abundantly. I come that you should live life to the fullest. Amen. Walking around here, always, always struggling. You know, how you doing, Sterling? Hey, man, I, I, I'm just surviving. No, God never intend for us to just survive. He said the just shall live to your fullest potential and ability. Proof of ability. The just shall, you're looking at me like all cross-eyed and I'm being funny. So let me just come behind him for your story. <laughs> live means not just to survive. Not trying to keep your head above water. George, how you doing? Man, Pastor, I'm just hanging in there. Well, hang in there for how long? How much longer are you going to keep hanging on? That branch is going to break with you hanging on. God said live to your fullest potential and ability. Why? Because you're lawful and legal. You have to make things happen. Live. Not hanging in there. Now I'm, I'm trying to make it. Why are you trying to make it? When God already told you, you are lawful. You are legal. To live by faith. And here you are. I, I don't know. I don't know if that possible pastor. Can the thing be mighty, mighty rough around here? Do you know that, I'm closing. Do you know that life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you respond or how you react? Life is 10% what happens to you. If that's the everybody out with picking on me, that's only 10%. How are you going to respond? 90% of life is how you respond. How you retaliate, how you fight back, how you push back. You got to have here this relentless faith. I'm not sitting down. I'm not staying down. I know my situation is dark. I know things are bad. I know I'm struggling. I know I'm in the dark. But hear me, I'm going to keep pushing. I don't listen to me. If it means somebody to drag you kicking and screaming, I'm going to drag you kicking and screaming until you walk into your faith zone. down heaven's steps to do anything for Odie, Antonio, Devin, Dario, nor Sterling, nor Tremaine. God is going to tell you, make it happen. As he said to those two blind men, when he touched their eyes, he said to them, it's according to your faith. He said, it's up to you now. When he touched their eyes, come here, Sterling. When he touched their eyes, take your glasses off. When he touched their eyes, all Jesus did was touch their eyes. He didn't do none of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Those are gimmicks to draw an audience to themselves. 
He touched the eyes and he said, be it according to your faith. So he now has to do what? Put on his glasses. Because God is not going to put on the glasses. Did God put on the glasses? He put on his glasses. Thank you, sir. According to your faith. Now that I've touched your eyes, are you going to just sit down and say, what's next, God? My glasses in, 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 in my dresser. God said, well, Negro, go get it. <laughs> and put it on. According to your faith. Hey, Let me close. Because you're looking at me really funny. I'm getting scared when you look at me that way. Go to, go, to, go to Mark 5. Mark 5. I want to teach you this morning that it's all up to you. It's all up to you. It's, it's up to you. Not even up to Trump. We're going to make America great again. America is already great. Amen. He's late. Yeah. He's late. <laughs> Trump is oh, way late. Because yeah. America is already great. Amen. Huh? Uh -huh. huh? Amen. It's all about you. Where did I tell you to go? Mark 5. What verse? Mark 5. 34. Can I borrow your Bible starting? Yeah. Mark 5. My verse, my Bible, the page is torn out. Mark 5. Sterling, you really need glasses for this. Yeah. <laughs> Mark 5, 34. Hear what it says. And he said unto her daughter, unto her daughter, thy faith. What did he say? Your, your dancing. Your shouting. You're speaking in tongues. He said, your prayer. None of that. He said, Sterling, your daughter, your faith have made you whole. Remember another word I said, the Greek words we discussed about whole? He says, you are, your faith is the result for why you are whole. You were missing something, but your faith picked up the slack and gave you, remember the word, he restored, recovered. Your faith caused you to recover your wellness. You look at me real cross-eyed and funny. Remember I said to you, the word live, he said, you shall, the just shall live by faith. I said to you, the word live in the Greek means recover, repair, restore, behold. Surely. So he's saying to this girl, this lady, he says, your faith has caused you to recover your wellness that you once lost. Oh, man, good. Wow. Your faith, Antonio, caused you to recover, repair, regain, Amen. get back. It's your faith that did it. Not the preacher laying hands on you and blowing on you. It's your faith. Do you know a lot of people who get healed when they go to Benny Hinn services? It's not that Benny Hinn blow on them or, or Benny Hinn laying hands. It's the atmosphere that is already charged and yeah. their faith is so high. Yeah. Preach. Holy Preach. Holy. I'll close. He said, he said, your faith has made you whole. It's your faith, did it? What did it? Faith. Your faith. What did it? Faith. Your faith. What is faith? Your confidence in God, your belief in God, your trust in God, your persuasion, and he's all powerful and he can do this. He is all bad by himself. Amen. Your faith has made you whole. The just shall live. You shall recover what you lost. She lost her health and her faith caused her to regain, to recover, restore her health. Can I close now? Matthew. This is so good. I'm about to dance. Matthew 5. Matthew 13. You know, before we go to Matthew, let's take Mark. Go to Mark 6, 5. Mark 6, 5. Now, 
I want when you leave here today, you leave here and you make it a conscious decision every day that I am going to make things happen as that 18-year-old boy that I met in a parking lot in Miami, Florida, in Miami Gardens Drive, David McCarthy, 18 years old, struggling, having difficulty, but he kept on saying, Pastor, I can cut here. Pastor, I can cut here. Pastor, one day I'm going to have my own barber shop. Today he has two barber shops. One is eight years old, one is two. I asked David last week, how many people have worked for you in the first barber shop? He says, I have four barbers and six stylists. The last time I spoke to him, he said, they were paying me 150. Say, how much do they pay now? He said, $200. 10 times two, 2,000. That's only from one barber shop. This is a guy who was broke, struggling. Things are not going well. But he kept saying, I can make it. Amen. I can do it. I'm going to have my own barber shop. Pastor, one day I'm going to have my own barber shop. He kept on saying it so much. But kept, guess what? We got to stop saying things like, hey, you know, you know, you know, the black man ain't going to survive. The black man ain't going to really get much. You know, black man ain't going to get ahead. You know, I mean, it's, the system is only bent for the white man. Who said that? Who said the system is only built for the white man? Right, man. The black man. And I'll show you. Our words can be our greatest trap in life. Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter something said, you are sneered, you are trapped, you are messed up, you are hoodwinked behind your words. Amen. You cage yourself. <laughs> I'm not caging myself. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. I'm not caging myself. Where did I tell you to go, Mark? Six five. Can we read it together? Mark six five. I need to borrow Bible again. Mark six. My pages are torn. Mark six verse five. Hear what it says. And he could there do. This is powerful. This is Jesus, the all powerful Jesus, who can walk on water, who was dead, resurrected himself back to life. This is the same Jesus who can heal the dead, who can make deaf ears open, blinded eyes are open. This is the same Jesus when a lady was bent over for 18 years, straightened her out. But hear this. Hear what Jesus said, Antonio. Hear this. Jesus said in verse 5, and he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. He couldn't do <clears throat> no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few. I believe those few he touched were people who had faith. I believe those few he touched were those who were not saying, I, 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 I'm waiting on God to come down from heaven to do it for me. Go to Matthew. We're going to Matthew 13, 58. This one is going to make you dance. Matthew 13. Am I helping anybody? Oh, yeah. Hear this, sweetheart. <clears throat> God requires my involvement and participation to make it happen. God is not leaving heaven to come down to do it for us. I'll show you there's only one place in the Bible when God comes down to do it for us. And then another time God comes down is to stop a bunch of people who were so determined to make things happen and God had to come down and stop them and slow them. I said, God, you guys are moving too fast. Let me stop you guys. When they were building the Tower of Babel in Genesis 11, they said, we're going to build a tower to go to heaven. They were so determined, so serious. God had to yeah, come yeah, down. That's good. Oh, God. Yeah. Whoa! That's good. God. Yeah. See, that's what God wants to do. God wants to come down to stop you, not come down to help you. Yeah. Every 
already gave me the power to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew 13, 58. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. 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 Let's change the word unbelief. To the ghetto version. Doubting. Ain't gonna happen. Yeah. Ain't possible. I ain't, I ain't sure. What is it? I ain't sure. They say, I am not sure. You're so ghetto, you say, I ain't sure. I ain't sure. I ain't sure. Another ghetto version? Ain't fixing to happen. <laughs> Let's go to another ghetto version. It ain't seen to happen. It ain't seen to happen. And God is saying, it's already done. Be it according to your faith. Stop saying it seems to happen. Stop saying it fixing to happen. It requires it can happen. You can make it happen. It requires your involvement and your participation. I showed you last week, God is not going to come down, hold your hand and say, let me show you around. Let me walk you through this. God is not doing that. For this church to grow, it requires people that will show up every Sunday. How can this church or any church grow? By people showing up and doing what they're supposed to do. I shouldn't have to call anybody, text anybody to remind you about church. Do your boss call you and remind you about no, work? Does your boss call you? Matter of fact, if you're not going to work, you call your boss. Only place we disrespect God is the church. You, you, you don't show, you don't call, you don't do nothing, you just don't show. And you expect the pastor to feel sorry for you. Those days are over. You, you want it for now. You got to want it bad enough. Amen. Ain't nobody have to call you to serve God. And that's why sometimes we don't get our miracles because we don't want it enough. Yeah, sure. We don't show God how serious we are. Amen. Oh, you show McDonald's, uh -huh. KFC, wherever you work, every other work, but you show them how serious you are. If we begin to show God how serious we are and treat the house of God in the way we treat our job, every church in the world will be packed and running over. Amen. 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 <laughs> Who grows the church? We make it happen. Amen. Preach. Am I right or wrong? Whether you say I'm wrong, I'm dead right. <laughs> so might as well get on this right bus. <laughs> Look, verse Matthew 13, 58, and Jesus did not many mighty works because they kept saying it ain't been to happen. They kept saying it ain't going to happen for the black man. They kept saying, I ain't sure about this. <laughs> when are you going to stop saying, I ain't sure about this? You don't even say this, you say this. So you know you really get him. He says, he wanted to move. He wanted to do things. But the people, unbelief, stopped him. You know what God wants to do in your life, but you're so negative, you're so pessimistic, you're full of doubt, and you're just stopping God from birthing miracles in your life. You kept saying, I don't know, I don't think so. God is just, God is, I, you can have whatever you say. Mark 4. Let's close. This is it. Go home. And you're looking at me really funny. Mark 4. Mark 4. Uh, 
I need somebody else to buy it. I think this, 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 this verse is not in my Bible. Mark, Mark 4. Mark 4. <coughs> Did I say Mark 4? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mark 4. Mark 4. Let me make sure I gave you the right scripture. Make sure I gave you the right scripture. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to drop this one like a bomb right now. I'm going to drop it like a bomb. Uh, he said he couldn't do any mighty works. I'm wrong. Mark 11, 23, and 24. You've got to begin to speak a language that heaven understands and stop doubting. He said he couldn't do any many mighty works because the people, unbelief, blocked him stopped him. So, their unbelief, their negative speaking, their negative words. Mark eleven twenty three 23 says this. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall shall say shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. Shall not what? Why did Jesus couldn't do many mighty works because of their doubt, their unbelief? She shall not doubt in their heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever. You shall have whatsoever you say. So if you kept saying, well, I'm going to be broke. I'm just going to be broke until I die. I'm, the, I'm not just going to get, I'm the, the well, only, only the white man will survive. Uh, From when? 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 You know, I, I'm only supposed to be driving, riding a bicycle. From when? He said, you shall have, so if you kept saying you're going to have poverty, you shall have whatsoever you say. If you kept saying, well, I'm never going to get a hand, you shall have whatsoever you. If you keep saying, I shall overcome, I shall do better, I shall do well, you shall have whatsoever you say. Amen. Proverbs chapter 6, and we close. Is this helping anybody? Yes. When you leave here today, leave with a different mentality, a different way of thinking. Honey, it's in your hands. The power and the ability is in your hands. You have to make it happen. I know a dude who made it happen. He was 18, struggling, broke. Now he has two barbershops. Now he has a BMW and a Lexus. Now he has his own home with a swimming pool in the back. I've stayed in his home a couple times when I go to my home. I drove his BMW with the windows down so people can see. Mm -hmm. So I know. Don't, don't tell me it's impossible. Yeah. Amen. Where did I tell you to go? Proverbs 1? And what verse? No verse. No verse. All right, let's look at no verse. <laughs> he said no verse, so let's find no verse. Proverbs 6, verse 2. Thou art sneered with the words of your mouth. Stop blaming the white man. Stop blaming the system is against the black man. Stop blaming that you were born on the wrong side of the trap. He said you are sneered, you are trapped, you are hoodwinked, you are caged by your own negative words. He said, he said, you are sneered by the words of your mouth. Stop saying somebody always wishing me bad. Honey, it's your words that are messing you up. Can I break it down in the ghetto version? Can I read it from the ghetto version? Thou art jacked up with your own words. Just in case you don't understand, sneer is just jacked up. Yeah. Jacked up with your words. 
and hear that thou art taken with the words of your mouth. Your words trap you. You keep saying, A-I, A-I, A-I. So your words. Your, 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 your pessimistic words, your negative words, your, your, your doubtful words, your I can't make it words. He said, no. You can make it happen if you begin to change your mentality and the way you look at things. Am I helping anybody this morning? Amen. He said, be in according to your faith. Let's look at it. Let's, let me give you the last three and we close. So he said, be according to your faith. You can make things happen according to your faith. Okay? Let's look at this real quick. Go to, uh, go to uh, Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Um, and let's look at this one that says, according to Luke 138. Quickly. You can make it happen according to your faith. Luke 138, you can have, make it happen according to that word. That means say positive thing. Believe the word of God. Luke 138. And Mary said, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me, hear this, according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Listen, the angel brought a message, George. The angel left after she said, it can, be ha it can be possible. The angel brought a message and Mary said, Mary didn't say, well, I'm not too sure. Mary said, be it unto me according to your word. That means it's possible. Be it unto me according to your faith. Be it unto me according to thy word. And let's look at another one real quick. Go to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that, is at, that he asks or think. Here what God is saying, you can do exceeding abundantly above. Don't limit yourself. Stop limiting yourself. All that you ask or think, hear this, hear the words, according to the power that worked within you. So hear this, according to thy faith, according to thy word, and hear this, according to what? Power. The power that works on the inside of you. He never said anything about God coming down from heaven to do it for you. He said according to your faith, according to thy word, and according to what? The power that works on the inside of us. He never said the read confirmation never said anything that God is coming down heaven steps to do it for you and lead you and spoon feed you and hold your hands and walk you through it. Did it? He said, according to your faith, according to the power that works on the inside of you, and according to thy word. And here's the last one, Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Here's the last one. Matthew 25, verse 14. Is this helping anybody? Amen. This is the last scripture. Matthew 25. God requires your participation and involvement. Matthew 25. And let's look at verse 14 and 15. I showed you, according to your faith, it can happen, George. According to thy word, it can happen. And according to the power that works on the inside of you, meaning you have a kind of power on the inside of you that can make things happen. And lastly, he said here, verse 15 of Matthew 25, verse 14, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Hear this, verse 15, and unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man, hear this, according to his several ability and straightway took his journey. So four things. According to thy faith, according to thy word, according to the power that works on the inside of you. And Matthew, 4, Matthew 25, 15 says, according to your ability. Can you handle it? Your ability. David talked his way, 
walked his way and lived his way out of poverty and struggle because of his ability to cut hair. Now today he's doing very well financially. Because of his ability. So you can make things happen based on either your word, your ability, the power on the inside of you, or your faith. You have options, man. You have options. Why are you settling for where you are? David made it because of his ability. These guys were given according to the ability. You can make it happen based on your ability. What can you do? What can you do? What can you do? You can make it happen. There's something you can do. There's something you can start working on to change your present condition right now. Everyone stand up.